How you doing, everybody? This is Harper. I wanted to talk about something this morning. Good morning to you. You know, it's very um, peculiar, the situation I'm in politically as uh, a black man that's a native to this country. It's very, very peculiar. And I took up the the president's agenda and the advocacy on the, the President Donald Trump removing and draining the swamp in this country because I know what a failure it is as an American to experience illegal immigration, especially as a black person. And as a person uh, that's middle class and lower middle class, I know what the failure is of that. And then the same token given, I am a descendant of slavery. So I also know what the failure is to be the descendant of slavery in this country throughout a huge disadvantage and being made and being positioned like positionality, like being positioned at a bottom cast in terms of business and political existence. <clears throat> Excuse me. Political. And it's very methodical. And it's done that way. And when you look at the charts, you start to see it. It's really scary. And it speaks volumes. And we understand that it's a huge disadvantage. It means a lot. It means a lot to me that this exists this way. But it's very peculiar. And then we look at it and we understand that what we have done in our society as a black person, solely a black person, because that's what I am. I'm a, I'm a descendant of slavery. Yes, I am. Probably the 10th generation or something. And what we have done and allowed to be is that a person has came from a very crude disadvantage and a very inhumane um, atmosphere of things in which how they were positioned. And that's a child slavery, Jim Crow and so forth, and the way of doing business and the wars against the slave descendants in this country throughout all kinds of huge and, and um, disadvantages and inhumane and heinous exchange in terms of business and political existence. So therefore, um, you, were, you were shaped and formed into a space where you are a bottom feeder and a bottom status quote. Whereas though people now can have empire that reigns wealth and money and you exist in it and need to be there and need to actually promote it to live without being politically rectified in terms of the law and the constitution, which was supposed to be the 40 acres of the mule and protected class citizenship, which our leaders kept going and dra driven to and they were basically assassinated, removed, quieted down in a militant force throughout the United States government. And then the, the, the disadvantage was sanctioned by the United States government which was before all of us, but yet we still we still hold on to the idea and the ideology of what was of what was set up, and that was the huge disadvantage of slavery, chattel slavery, Jim Crow, and redlining for the for the black people in the country, and that are natives to this country, and that are slave descendants, ADOS. So now we got people that are talking that are not us and some that are us. You know, unfortunately, some are us that are boule and that have a pretty much a, a illusion or a, and a rude presumption of what we should be because they have so-called pretty much ideally, listically made it, which they haven't. I mean, but, you know, cause, because if you eat the failure of, of being a descendant of slavery, you can do that on high levels. There's levels to this. You are who you are. And if you are American descendant of slavery, that's what you are. We know that through the science. Now, it's not easy always talking and having an analysis about it because people are not ready for the information and it scares them. And I think what a lot of people are doing, news anchors and politicians that have like a island blackness, like Kamala Harris and Roland Martin and all these people and Joy Reid, they 
they're black people, but they are not anchored in our our history. They're not us. They're black people. And and what they done was they came to our country and they took advantage of the things that were put into act for the black people here, which are the slave descendants. And then they 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 were able to access that um and do well in it. Not to mention that because they are not us, they're really not us. They're they're not. They came here to actually be involved, in which that are which that is a tangible, that is good, for for a black person. And they're not us. They're not. They haven't been. This is not their land of captivity. So in in and and they're not positioned the way we are. And they don't have to have the mentality of that. Now, they can be treated with racism, I mean, prejudice, and maybe even racism, um, because they are black people and they look black, but they, they, they're not, they have not um, intellectually or intellectually been um, harmed in a way which the slave descendants have. They don't have, they're not anchored in the history of this, what we done, of this, this is something different. So I understand where I am. And these people here are saying a lot of things and they don't know what they're talking about. And it's, it speaks volumes because they don't really have the history. And once, once they try to regurgitate our history, they don't really do a very good job because they don't understand and they don't want to. They, they are something else. Now, they're here in the fight of blackness because they can basically access that, like I said, which is good. And those laws that have been put in place through our wars that our ancestors had to fight. And then they just kind of like came from a space of like having a his start. Because their 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 parents are progressives in from their lands and how they exist. And they're like Kamala Harris uh, mother is a scientist. I mean they she's a she's one of those Indians, one of those Boulay Indians. I mean these are who these people are, but don't doesn't change the fact that her skin is brown. And that she can so-called claim blackness. Her dad is a Jamaican. So she's black. Okay? But she's not a descendant of slavery. And we are the mass black people in this country who have experienced a huge and crude disadvantage. In terms of the numbers, the way our communities are set up, and the way we have been kind of sort of trapped around an engine which we have to support. And patronize when it does not, we don't, we don't reciprocate loyalty in a way of capital, in a way of America, in a way of a respected group, of a respected empire. When we were supposed to be given these things so that we can reign in wealth and be on an equal playing field and not just some people who's trying to gather something when everybody else have the tangibles of their sufferings. That's what happened to us. This is the land of our captivity. That's the difference in us and them. And we're constantly explaining this. But the redoing it, and it's not redundant to me because it's repetition of emphasis. But we're constantly saying this because they're constantly coming up with all kinds of foolish and um, goofy arguments about who we are. And they're basically, basically what's happening, they're becoming not, they're not, I wouldn't say disdain. We're pretty much with disdain with their response as people who are opposed of us having an agenda, and that's what we have a right to do for our um, voter, for our voter block, for us as a people in the natives of this country. And you guys benefit from us. So they are opposing us as though we are not even existing. And so we, we are just staying with that, and it's disparaging. But we, what I feel that they are, they are afraid of us and they are becoming inferior to our truths they're becoming inferior they become an elephant in the room and inferior to to our methodic and um precise truths about the situation our specificity specific understanding about who we are and what's what's really going on it's scary and you can just see it it's transparent that you can see it now on the other hand, I agree with the agenda of uh, President Donald Trump. I know that he talked about uh, not being for reparations. And black people have been without this so long. 
until we just kind of like took one for the team and let's just get on whichever side that's going to be the best for us. So, so a lot of us thinking that the president draining the swamp is helping the black people and our, and our tax dollars from going to other groups that are oppressing our communities. I don't know if the president will reconsider in terms of reparations or uh, how he may deal with this. I don't know what his base will say and what it would do to the country or what it would do in terms of a Republican. I do know that I have to keep my ears and eyes open and I see myself as an independent. But I have been Republican, a uh, voting Republican, due to my uh, concern of my safety and my children and my family. Because the Democratic Party has been very reckless and they have been acting and taught like criminal, like the criminals and communists. And it's very, very uh, wicked and it's very, uh, un it's unsafe and unsure. So this is why I call this peculiar for us. However, I'm ADOS and I'm black first and uh, I support Yvette Cornell and Antonio Moore. I am them. That's who I am. And uh, I want to learn more and be about the agenda because it's very, um, it's a deep discussion, but it's straight to the point. And I think what make it like this is because the way we are shaped, like I said, the way we are positioned, people do not expect us to have a sophisticated voice in terms of politics solely for our group because everybody has submerged themselves into us. They have interjected themselves into us to, to just to manipulate the idea of success and power because they know we have anchored laws, some laws for ourselves in a first world nation. And everybody came here for opportunity. And the only way they can get in the door really is to be, you know, if they're black, is to actually be on some of those agendas and in, in some of those um, in, in a lot of that atmosphere like the civil rights laws and affirmative action. And in our colleges and historic black colleges, they they need that which we fought for, but they don't want to be here and get in the fight in terms of us because we're still in a space where we are owed a debt by our country. And we have been in a huge disadvantage due to who we are and what this country represents. And that's the first world. It represents power and wealth. And we have not have access to that outside of being an entertainer and so forth. And not very many of us. So we understand these things and they don't care. And because we understand that as we be more methodical about it and more clear, they are becoming inferior to our truths. That's what's happening. And so far as that concern, I continue that we should move on and keep doing what we're doing. Because we are the best scholars through our history. As we go forth, we will also pull a lot of different um, historian facts out. We will pull a lot of information out that they think they're scared now. You let us keep talking. They don't really understand us in a prestigious manner. They don't know that we're intelligent. They want to make us disappear. And they want to project the image on us that the what the media says that we are. And that most black people are following degeneracy, hip hop, and you know, just kind of like going with the program and really don't have a mind or imagination. Uh, any knowledge, political awareness, and stuff like that. And that's not who we are at a 50%, in a huge percent. It's just we are forced in a space throughout where we were anchored wrongfully in the society. And they don't know that. So they got a lot to learn about us. So we have to keep up the fight. We do. And much obliged again to Yvette Cornell, Antonio Moore, Sandy Darity, Black Truth, and all of us, Tariq Nasheed. I mean, every last one at the grassroots, I don't care who you are, ADOS channel, uh, everybody. We just have to understand our prestige is real and people don't know how to receive it. But that's not our fault. We can't be punished because you don't understand and you don't have a, a um, open dialogue in terms of us. 
that's that's something that's not acceptable to us and it shouldn't be because we are a um intelligent human um and a lot of us have very high IQs and we have a lot of information and we know who we are and a lot of people have used us and y'all don't want us to say that because you are now caught with your hand in the cookie jar you're caught with your hand in the cookie jar but that's okay I would tell you to be humble, respectful, and be very careful and walk very lightly and keep it on ice because we here and we coming. Okay? And yeah, the check does need to be cut. Thank you for joining me. This is Harper.